everyone, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D print creator. When you're working with a hot end, like this one here, uh, you want to know how all the parts are named. And uh, well, I see a lot of wrong names, so I'm going to tell you the correct ones. So here I've got all the parts for a hot end assembly. And I start with, uh, well, with assembling the hot end. And the first thing I have here is the heat sink. This is the heat sink and this is going to dissipate all the heat that's coming from the heater, which I'm going to show you later on. And uh, this uh, heat sink will make the heat go away. So uh, there is a small fan that is blowing air and the air will uh, rush aside this heat sink and then uh, it will cool down this part of the heat system. Then inside the heat break there is going to be, oh sorry the heat sink, there is going to be a heat break. This part here that screws in, this is the heat break. The heat break is a small part that is thick on the bottom side and thick on the top side but it's very small in between, so it can uh, only get that hot and it can only uh, transfer the heat a little. And this is why it's used. Uh, this heat break makes a difference between what is here and what's going up on top of the heat sink. Then on top of that heat break, or at the bottom, because this is the lower part, uh, there is going to be this heater block. So this part here is called the heater block. And you just screw it in like this. But before you do so, you have to attach the nozzle. The nozzle is where the filament is going uh, to be extruded out of the machine. So you have the nozzle that's going to be placed here. And uh, this is the part where the filament is coming out. At first, and I have to do it the correct way around, like this. At first, when you screw in the nozzle, you screw it in completely. And then when you've done so, you turn it one quarter uh, piece outside. So, so you screw it in. And then for one, one quarter you screw it back. Then the shorter part of the heat break will be inserted on the other side until you hit the nozzle. So now the nozzle and the heat break are hitting each other. You don't use force on this because when you use force you can break this part. Now you're going to put the heat sink on top. And again, just make it hand tight, don't use force on it. And now it's depending on what kind of uh, system you have bought. On some systems uh, you will have a PTFE holder on top, like this. This can hold a PTFE tube that comes in, like from a Bowen, Bowden extruder setup. Or sometimes it's just open with a small opening. Uh, and a funnel that makes the, the filament go, go in straight. So it depends on what kind of uh, system you've bought. Then for this system to work you need a heater. This is the heater and that can be installed like this. Uh, you, you make it in place that it sticks out a little bit on both sides and then you place a screw on, uh, on this part so that you mount this part together and it can be mounted like this and then the last part you have to attach is this this part here uh, is called the thermistor it senses the temperature so you bring it in like this and uh, then you make one wire go one way around the screw and one wire go the other way around the screw like this
and then you put in the screw in between the two wires so you hold the wires in place and the thermistor will be held in place like here and this thermistor will sense the temperature of this heat block so this is how you uh, attach every part of the E3D V6 or E3D V6 compatible hot ends. The original E3D V6 doesn't work with a thermistor anymore, but it now works with a thermistor cartridge. It's something that looks like the heater and that you can mount inside, and then it's a cartridge instead of a thermistor block. When you're using this for the very first time, you have to make sure that this nozzle and the heat brake, which is the small part inside here, have to uh, be attached very firmly. But just because you can't apply any force to the heat brake, you have to make sure that you do it the correct way. And the correct way of doing so is by holding this piece in a way that it can't move. And then using the correct tools to place on top of the nozzle and tighten it just a little. Uh, you do this when uh, the, the maximum temperature is set to this system. So when you're going to print at maximum 240 degrees Celsius, then you heat it up to 240 degrees Celsius inside your printer and then you tighten it before you let filament run through it. Um, if you're going to use it on a system that goes uh, to 300 degrees Celsius, for example, then you have to make it tight at 300 degrees Celsius. If you don't do so, then there will be a small cap between the heat brake and the nozzle, and the filament will flow out and will cover all the parts. So uh, then you can throw away your complete system. Again, there are two types. There is a short type and a longer type. This is called the longer type because it has this PTFE tube holder, this push fitting. Uh, and then there is a shorter type which is like this one, which has an opening with a funnel. So those are the two types. And uh, well, you can mount it very easy, uh, it's not difficult to do. And I prefer the original E3D V6 hotends, those uh, which I show you are clones. Um, they have an inner liner tube inside. This is a small PTFE tube that's inside here. Uh, when you have the original E3D V6, then it can be all metal. And when it's all metal, uh, well, when you have uh, retraction settings set on your printer, uh, it will be less uh, likely that it will jam inside this tubing. So this is it for uh, yeah for mounting an E3D V6 hot end uh, or, or bringing it all together. I hope you like this video. If so, please subscribe and please uh, do like my channel. And well, I'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.